joining us. I apologize that we are running a little bit late. Um, so we have feedback from several committees regarding um, aspects of S-54 that we um, understand they would like to weigh in on. And so I was hoping that you could present to me uh, the request of the Transportation Committee that you and I spoke about. Yes. Um, if this committee is interested in looking at the seatbelt portion of uh, S-149, which is the miscellaneous motor vehicle bill that passed the House on the third reading uh, yesterday, goes to the Senate today. Um, as you know, we, uh, I think the only reason there were any no's in the voice vote uh, yesterday and Friday was with the seatbelts. <laughs> um, so it's somewhat controversial, but uh, still uh, a strong majority of the House supports it, and the House has supported it for the last several years, and the Senate has not. Uh, the language that you see in that bill now, I can uh, don't want to speak for the governor, but let me say um, I believe that he would sign that bill. So um, the problem is only in the Senate. So another place with that exact language, but you can obviously do what you want with it, but uh, uh, being related, Highway safety, with, which is some of the biggest concerns with, uh, with marijuana, um, uh, uh, I think it would be great if you guys put it in that bill, or at least you know, consider that. Um, we've also given the uh, the uh, saliva testing issue to judiciary. We are I'm not dealing with that at all. You never look at that. So. <laughs> Jim. This isn't in lieu of saliva testing, that is what you're saying. Oh, no. Oh, no. 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 I just want to clarify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when I talked to my committee about it, uh, the first question was they didn't want to give it up, you know, give up the seat. They thought it was coming out of our bill, and uh, the request would be to put it in this bill. No. It would be duplicative. And uh, if both bills pass, in the end, uh, like I said, council and others worked that out, so we don't have exactly any good item. Let me show them two bills. It comes out of one. I'm sorry. It's the exact language in two different bills that both passed. Yes, as long as it's identical. Yeah. It was in the effective date. Is the same. Yeah. Let me pick up a word or two different. Whichever has the later effective date. Just so that we're clear here, uh, not to say that we said wasn't clear, but yeah. So you're you're proposing that we put primary seatbelt enforcement yep. into the become a part of S54. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For those of you not in pain, one hundred percent attention. I didn't do that one when you few words, but um, yeah. All, all we're doing is uh, seat, wearing your seatbelt is required by law in the state of Vermont today. Uh, what is not allowed is that to be the primary enforcement. And what that means is a police officer cannot pull your car over because he or she thinks you don't have your seatbelt on <coughs> only. They can pull you over for another reason, such as a uh, license plate light, which we discussed just yesterday. Um, and uh, uh, while you're pulled over, if the officer notices you don't have your seatbelt on, you can be ticketed for it. Yeah, but that's, and that's called secondary. And um, I would also note that we took out the uh, penalty for the first offense. So it's really a warning, the first offense. Because we, we don't want to issue any tickets <coughs> for not running a Okay, so that's helpful to understand. So you, you are requiring, or you are allowing primary seatbelt, but the first time is a warning. Yep. Questions? Rob. Does that, does that work as well if it's the secondary offense? Or is there 
generally going to be a fine associated with it. In other words, I get pulled over for an invalid inspection sticker, not wearing my seatbelt. Do I get the same consideration? You mean, could there be a fine because of the seatbelt not being on? Yes. And it's, and it's the mm -hmm. first time you'll pull over? Yeah. No, it would still be uh, no fine for the seatbelt. Uh, okay. Follow up on that? Yeah, just to clarify. If you're pulled over for something else, I think is what he's saying. Yep. It's a secondary enforcement right now. Of, of the seatbelt thing. Right. Yeah. What happens today? Are you uh, $25. Okay. Thank you. That, so are and then we, it goes up. Okay, time, okay. So on a secondary enforcement, are we taking away the $25? It's the, Forget about primary for a minute. Maybe not. <coughs> yeah. Good question. First well, it's yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. You, you were unclear. <laughs> no, it, it was perfectly clear. Actually. So I've got Bob and then JP. Oh, and then So between the day quill and the night quill, I'm having a tough time <laughs> of how this is germane to the pot bill. Um, Other than just the general umbrella, if you're driving impaired, you're safer when you're belted in. Is that the bottom line? Yeah, well, well that's it. I, mean, I think that, the, well, people have different reasons, you know, for supporting and, and, and not supporting uh, legalizing marijuana. So one of the primary reasons for some people, uh, including the governor, is um, uh, that not having faith in saliva testing. And then being concerned that um, it's you know uh, another thing that somebody might be impaired, um, and maybe saliva testing. Uh, those who think this, uh, they don't trust saliva testing, so they just want to be as safe as possible uh, on, on the roads. I guess, and I'm I'm looking at it as another way to try to, to pass from every single. So my second reason, my reason, I guess, is political trying to get it done, but there is definitely a nexus. JP, yeah, I had, I had two things. One, uh, I think they already hit on it, and the answer was, we don't know yet. Yeah, and, that was, gonna... and that was what happens to the first offense that you get now, because it, it, it's not a primary. Seatbelt is not a primary, so you can stop for speed. And, the officer observes you're not wearing a seatbelt. He checks the box, and unless that's changed, Lieutenant, and uh, I've been off the job for four, four years, I don't know. But in it tax on it, you check a box, and you get a 25 hour additional fine for the right. seatbelt. So, so the bill that's going through eliminates the first uh, eliminates the first offense from having a fine. So my question was going to be, did that? How did that affect the current law? You see, and then the and then the second question, sir, is that when we uh, might have, I think if I answered that or not? No, I did. If if you get a primary stop for a seatbelt, the officer stops you, gives you. Or, or again, the lieutenant might have to answer this one procedurally. Does the officer give you a real ticket, not a warning ticket, but a real ticket for the seatbelt violation, but with no fine? Because somehow that has to be tracked. So if somebody in my town of Milton right, does this, somebody in Bennington needs to see that in a DMV computer and or whatever. And, and you know what I'm saying? And it can't just go into the computer systems because there's a couple different computer systems in use in the state. Billman and Valcor, and she knows what I'm talking about, but there's two different. So I'm just wondering, do you issue a ticket without the fine? Has that been looked at? And see, we got two issues here. You got to track the, you got to track the offenses in order to have the the primary seatbelt work, because you've eliminated the fine on the first one, and because you've done that, you've also now eliminated the fine for the secondary violation. Yeah, I believe the ticket is still written. Uh, if it's your first time, and if it's said now, most of it, if it's your first time, primary reason, seatbelt. Right. The ticket is written, there's no fine. Right. 
That's and, right. I, and I'm, well, I think what I'm thinking that I think the answer to Bob and Jim's question is going to be that that you don't pay that even if it is secondary because mm -hmm. of the way we put it in the law. But I, I have to check that. Mike Nelson, Jim Roth. What's our current compliance rate? It's very high. Um, uh, and will be raised probably about 6% by this if we experience what other states have. I believe it's, um, Ted, isn't it about 80% uh, uh, compliance with where It fluctuates between 87 and 89. Oh, okay. yeah, I'm sorry, 86 to 89. Yes, but, but please contemplate this along with that. Um, last year, of all the highway deaths in Vermont, 63% of those deaths, the person did not have a seatbelt. Yeah, yeah, I guess my concern was I, I understand seatbelts should be worn for safety reasons. And I agree that uh, we need to somehow inform the public so they become better aware of it, the ones that aren't aware of it. However, I have a concern with the fact that currently you can't stop somebody not wearing a seatbelt if it's the only thing you see. If we put it in law where they can do that, what does that lead to for the next step that will be a search uh, or whatever, just because I don't like the way the person looks? Just to remind you, this past week, the house was yesterday. I know. So we can certainly pursue those questions. Um, but. I also uh, am aware that we have a 1030 change of gear to come back to the to another bill. So let's see if we can air some questions and then I would welcome you all to have some hallway conversations and follow up with um, state police or uh, the transportation chair, Jim and then Rob. So real quickly, I don't have any issue with putting this on the bill. Um, secondly, um, I would recommend that we keep the $25 for both. Um, I think a warning, if we're serious about this, $25 is not a very harsh penalty. Arguably, it's too light, but um, to take it away altogether may encourage people to, well, until I get it stopped, I don't have to worry about it. Rob? Good man. Okay. Gotcha. Any points on the license that goes no. on? Okay. No matter how many times you're cited for not wearing a seatbelt, that never has points. Thank you for your patience in uh, our little delay, and thank you for helping us understand what we have some past Debate these two later. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like what you want. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, Kurt. retirement bill that is back from the Senate uh, with one small change so I understand that Becky Wasserman is on her way up to join us 